So, Cinema, what did you think of Star Wars The Force Awakens? Did you like it, love it, or hate it? it. Oh, yeah. she loved it. <laughs> Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens, is directed by J.J. Abrams, and it stars Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac, Donald Gleeson, and Andy Serkis, with the inclusion of Harrison Ford returning as Han Solo and Carrie Fisher returning as Princess-slash-General Leia. With the anticipation of Episode 8 coming out in three days, uh, we are going to assume that you have seen The Force Awakens already, so this review will include spoilers, so you have been warned. So we're just going to jump right into our positives with this review and talk about the plot. I thought it was a pretty strong plot. Granted, it did copy a little too much off of Star Wars Episode Four: New Hope, but that's not a bad thing. I thought the plot of A New Hope was good, and the elements that they took from it did pretty well. The main character, Rey, grows up on a desert planet. She's an outcast, and suddenly the Empire, or in this movie, the First Order, does something on this planet, and she gets all wrapped up in the plot of the story, and it's, it's very similar to A New Hope. But that's not a bad thing, like I said. So I think the best thing going for this movie is that it was directed by J.J. Abrams. He brings so much to the Star Wars universe with all of his really, really cool, detail-oriented space things that just happen. The way he shoots things, the way he directs his characters and or actors, and all the pieces that come together, the humor and everything, just, it's awesome. Yeah. And you do see J.J. Abrams' thumbprint all over this movie with the shots. Mm -hmm. he, he sneaked in a few lens flares here and there, but that's okay. It looks cool. I do feel like he was put on a tighter leash in this movie, though. Um, like, he wasn't able to go full-on J.J. Abrams like he did in Star Trek. Uh, which, when I first heard that J.J. Abrams was directing this movie, I was like, he can't go from Star Trek to Star Wars. That's not... Fair. I was like, sweet, then you can bring both of the yeah. cool things of, from both worlds together and it it'll be amazing. It worked really well. I, I love the way he shoots mm -hmm. this movie. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. So, for one, the landscapes in mm. this movie are amazing. Whoever did the, the location scouting or the special effects for whatever background, it, it was so great. I yeah. love the long shots, even in the desert, the most boring place on the planet yeah. was made to look um, awesome, especially with the ships that are crashed into Jakku and yeah, the um, that was so Imperial cool. um, cruisers and whatever. And the beautiful lush green water plant, forest planet that Maz Kanata is on is really, really cool. And even when that building gets, is ruined basically, yeah. It's still a really interesting setting for all of it. Even Starkiller Base is inside of a planet, and it's really, really yeah. cool. The, the The setting in this is just amazing. Yeah, and I do like that they go from desert to a foresty planet to a snow planet. It's very Star, Killer Star Base. Wars. And then kind of like an island water planet. That was really cool, and yeah, it's very Star Wars-y. This is one of the more Star Wars-y movies that they've made. I know that sounds weird to say, but it, it really is because they travel to different planets. Mm -hmm. It's kind of all taking place in like one day, pretty much. I mean, once Ray gets all wrapped up in things, just one thing happens after another and it doesn't stop. And I like that. Uh, very similar to A New Hope. One of the best things about this movie is the villain, Kylo Ren, played by Adam Driver. And I do appreciate the fact that they didn't try to keep his identity a secret for too long. Because, like, pretty much everyone is going to figure it out at that point, you know. It's the Han Solo's and uh, Princess Leia's son, Ben Solo. Um, I love his mask. It's cool. Because he's, he's basically, like, idolizing Darth Vader, his grandfather. And I really admire that about the writing of that character. Because he's gathered up like those relics his helmet and he's trying to be him and his lightsaber is awesome i love how it's like a corrupted kyber crystal or something that's split into three different directions with like the guard on the side it's, i thought it was a really cool design i also really like how it's very reflective of his like yes rage and 
mm-hmm. instability. Yeah. Because he's constantly going between cool, calm, collected, <laughs> ruthless, and then just this fireball of rage where yeah. he's just knocking everything down and then he composes himself immediately. There's no like middle ground. Yeah. And I really like how complex he is. Yeah. Like his backstory, we don't know fully what the backstory is, but you get it right off the bat. Yeah. And he is a villain who gets things done, which you don't see very much. Right. They kind of just play around and beat around the bush and all that kind of stuff. He just kind of does stuff. Yeah. And, and when we first saw it in that, in that first scene on Jakku, uh, where Kylo Ren stops the laser blast that uh, Poe Dameron shoots at him. Clearly powerful. I was like, <laughs> whoa, we had never seen that before. But really, we had, because Darth Vader kind of stops laser blasts with his hand from Han Solo but not in Empire frozen. Strikes Back. He doesn't stop him in midair and let him go while he's having a conversation. So I thought that was really cool. He's a bit overpowered. He's able to like stop people from moving and like I don't know, that was cool, but I think it's overpowered because it's like he could easily do that and then kill him. I, right then I and there. still think though they did a good job with him not because I I think it is tiring for him to do that. Yeah. But he, that's then, why he only uses it when he really needs yeah. to. And then, of course, as Rey continues her training in The Last Jedi, she might be able to combat it better. Yeah, so. but I like the, fa- the, the dynamics between the two of them because he notices right away that she is pretty yeah. powerful in the Force. Yes. And he's trying to almost take her under his wing instead of being like most villains would be, would be you know, intimidated yeah. or afraid of well i guess he was afraid but i mean he would be intimidated or have like an inferiority complex or i better kill that person right. before they become too powerful but he's almost like wanting to take her <laughs> yeah and and forces? say let's you need to join me because yeah. we could be real powerful together kind yeah. of a thing and i don't know if kind it's of a, like darth vader did with yeah Luke. i don't know if it's like a crush thing yeah, I know. Like, cause I, Cause I kind of felt that Ray at is. certain points and other points, I think he was just, wow, this is a powerful, I want her on my side rather yeah. than fighting against me. Yeah. And uh, it's almost like a weird love triangle between Kylo Ren, <laughs> Rey, and uh, Finn. Yeah, and then you had the bromance weird. between and Finn <laughs> and Poe Dameron. <laughs> and the bromance. But I, I want to talk about Finn for a little bit because I really like his character. I, I love the fact that he's a stormtrooper that is like, his eyes are open. He's like, this is wrong, what we're doing here. Um, I do have some negatives to talk about his character, but I love the idea of taking a stormtrooper and making him a good guy. Mm-hmm. And Especially because they're not clones anymore. Yeah, which they're, is just, what I they're like taken that. at birth from their families yes, and trained. Right. That's, that's a cool and idea. Conditioned in their, I, I like yeah. that idea. And then we go to Poe Dameron who I appreciate having that character who's only a pilot. He's not a Jedi and a pilot. He's just a pilot. And I I think I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I think if there's one character that was underused in the original trilogy, it was Wedge Antilles. And I think this is their answer to that, to be like, hey, people liked Wedge Antilles, and this is the new version of him. He's like the best pilot in the Resistance. And they actually, they call him that. And I think that's cool. He might be I a think... little too good, because some of the things that he does, he's like flying around this battle at Maz Kanata's uh, facility whatever. place, yeah. whatever, on that planet. And he's like wiping out TIE fighters left and right. It's cool. And is noticed by... Yeah. What a pilot! Yeah. I was like, oh, that's a little heavy-handed. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's a little <laughs> much. But it's still cool. Mm-hmm. So now we really have to talk about the return of General Leia, now General Leia, and <laughs> Han Solo and Chewbacca, because you know this was an anticipation from Star Wars mm-hmm. fans for ever. Yeah. And I love, I love the way Han Solo and Chewbacca came in. They find the Millennium Falcon, they come in, and they say, we're home, and you got Chewie. You're just like, it's that moment of just pure satisfaction that you're yeah. just like, yes! Um, Princess Leia, not so much. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you got to be respectful. She was not herself. No. And I know she's a lot more obviously advanced in years, and a lot has happened between the original and now. Yeah. But she just didn't. She seemed ve- rather passive 
yeah. in this, which is not consistent with Princess Leia, who's always getting things done, always fighting, always trying to do things. Very, very... Um, She's in the mess. Yes. And this time she just kind of is like... It's your fault our son went away. <laughs> yeah, she's... <laughs> she's very she's, passive. She's, she's much more of a general instead of like a captain or whatever. I don't know. Making ranks, things happen. She just kind of is in the background just kind of observing and giving advice when needed. And Yeah. And just to touch again on Ray's character, she does feel like a bit of a Mary Sue where she's basically talented at, at everything. She's able to figure out everything and just do it right away. Um, that comes in the form of flying the Millennium Falcon, uh, figuring out the Jedi mind tricks, figuring out how to fight with a lightsaber, but all that can be explained with being, hey, the Force awoke within her. Which is kind of a lame excuse, but it's still like, you know what? I can accept it. But and she move was on. good at all that other stuff before the Force yes, Awakened. Because she explains it. You don't you have to listen very closely because it's when her and Finn are basically talking back and forth at the same time. Where she's like, I've flown fighters or ships before, but not like this or something like that. Um, after they get away from the TIE fighters on Jakku. Uh, which was a great scene, by the way. That was one of my favorite scenes of the movie. Mm -hmm. That whole TIE fighter chasing the Death Star and then they go into the Star Destroyer. Oh, that's so cool. But I really liked her character. I mean, she's likable because mm -hmm. of her innocence first of all her sad backstory the fact that she's such a true character mm -hmm. you kind of need that to to balance out kylo ren yeah. you know like the sheer ruthlessness rage. and rage from him <laughs> you kind of need that innocence which i think they balance each other out really well and that's yeah. what i really like i really liked her character but and the mystery surrounding her character which right. we will get to at the end of the video, because we have some theories. And again, spoiler alert, the way they handled Han Solo's death was, I thought, beautiful, um, which we also have some theories about that as well. So but definitely stay till the end of the video. Now we really have to talk about the music mm -hmm. in this because not only is it very well done with the reworking of the original Star Wars themes, but you also get introduced to the new Star Wars themes with the new characters. And yeah. I love Ray's theme. You know, That's it is one great. of, I think, my favorite movie themes. Really? Yeah. Since, the like, original Star the Wars. original Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Luke's, no. Luke's theme from the original is one of my favorite movie yeah. scores. And this one is up there, for sure. I do have to say, though, it does sound a little too Harry Potter-ish to me. But I like Harry Potter music too, so that's not a terrible thing. It just feels disjointed, just a tiny bit. But once it feels starts, more, once it, at the mm -hmm. beginning of the song. Feels more magical than, yes. than, than Star, Star Wars-y. Wars yeah. But then it goes into her theme, and I'm good. If we go into the negatives right now, the cantina music, though, in this yes. was awful. <laughs> Whatever it is, it, it was bad. Yeah, it was not enjoyable. And I see what they were trying to do with it. Yeah. But. It was I a good callback to yeah. the original. But I think mm. they were more toward the the revision of the original <laughs> yeah. than. Yeah, the Blu-ray version of Return of the yes, Jedi. Yes, as opposed to the actual original cantina yes. music. Yeah. And there's so many little characters within that cantina scene at Maz Kanata's place that it's a little heavy-handed just to throw characters in different alien races and there are two characters in that scene or three characters really one is like a droid character who's like hey one the resistance we found their missing droid um there's another character that's part of the first order or working with the first order and he's like or she gets on a communicator and she's like hey we found the droid that you're looking for and the big huge character that she was sitting with before He's cool because he was a practical effect, but I just, there was, I think in the making of the movie, they were like, we're making a lot of things practical, and I think most of that was just to say, here's a practical effect. There's no reason for it, really. We just wanted to make practical effects. A lot of it was still CGI, a lot. Like, Snoke was entirely CGI. He wasn't practical. 
was um, motion captured. He was motion captured, but it was his face was all you know, CGI, um, which I think that they changed in the Last Jedi. But we don't need to talk about that right now. But I don't know. Just the fact that they had so many characters in that scene, so many alien races, that it just kind of felt a little too much of a cluster. And Maz Kanata, she's all right. I love her voice. Um, and she's important to the plot, but she feels more like a Yoda character that was just shoved in there just because they needed a Yoda a small, type character. Cute Yoda character. <laughs> yeah. Which is yeah. fine. Yeah. But Yoda didn't come until the Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> yeah. Plus, I feel like all the other smaller characters, like the gangs from. Uh, mm-hmm. Conja Club and Conja Club. <laughs> whatever the other guy's name was. I just felt like that was so unnecessary. Yeah. And I I just felt like they just kind of put these characters in just to populate the movie to have the main people yeah. just to work around. Um, <laughs> Star Wars like, has different accents and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, and there's Irish planets. <laughs> <laughs> Like the peasants at the beginning, I mean, I know it was kind of important, but they were kind of like, okay, we're just going to kill them all and we're not going to care <laughs> yeah. about them. And then you've got all of the gangs and then all of the cantina people and then all of the pilots and resistance people that just kind of are in a mass at the end of the movie. Yeah. And I don't know, I just felt like it was just thrown in there to, <laughs> if I can refer to Inception, you're just populating with your subconscious mm, yeah. and it's just not really necessary yeah. for a little bit. I mean, Piggy. necessary, but not very well. Yeah. I thought I thought it was stupid. Yeah. If I'm going to be quite honest. It, it just was stupid. Forced. In the Force no Awakens. No <laughs> um, Anyway, the, piggybacking off of what you were talking about with the gangs, one of my biggest negatives is the Raftar scene. Again? I, if we're gonna I don't know listen. why that was in the movie. It's stupid. It's forced. It was stupid. It was just a way to get them from, you know, Han Solo and Chewie having Ray and Finn at kind of pretty much blaster point, gunpoint, um, just to have something happen with the gangs, and then it's like, okay, we got to get them out of this situation. How about Han and Chewie are hauling some dangerous aliens that they accidentally let out? I didn't like that part at all. It felt like men in black, especially mm-hmm. the sounds they make. In fact, one of the times I hear it, I don't know if anyone else heard it, I don't know if you heard it, but they take the sound effect from Transformers, the signal sound, and I don't like that. It's Star Wars. They, they're so good at making sound effects. Why are they using sound effects from other movies? It, it's, I don't like that at all. And the fact that the Wrath Tars kill and eat all the gang members, but as soon as it grabs Finn, it's just going to drag him through the hallways for a couple minutes. Well, wait, just long Ray enough for him. Ray to close the door on the tentacle and cut it off. That was too... I don't know. It was too convenient yes. for the plot. Yes. But I will compose myself. I didn't really notice it the first time watching it. But after thinking about it and watching it a few more times, the, the plot is very similar to A New Hope with the, the droid that's being searched after, mm-hmm. um, the Death Star 3.0 <laughs> Star Killer yeah. base. Um, the in fact, I'm sorry, I gotta interrupt. They mention that yes. in the movie. <laughs> like, so it's another Death Star, and they're right. like, "Well, really, here's the Death Star, and here's Star Killer base." Yeah. It's bigger. Again, and that's a J.J. Abrams thing. He, yeah. He's okay with himself to say, yeah, yeah like, let's just be honest, same, that's what it is. But it's better. <laughs> right. And I don't know. I just think they could have done a lot more. But I think, again, I think they were just wanting to get a new Star Wars movie out. That yeah. They rushed it just to Ted. Mm-hmm. Um, I still think it was very well set up. Like I said, I didn't notice it the first time. Right. At least not right away. After thinking about it a little more, I did. But it's, again, the whole Nazi-type regime. Yeah. Uh, With the First Order. Right. And... They even do the little, pretty much, uh, Hitler salute type of thing. Basically, (laughs) yeah. But um, in the midst of all that negative, uh, Gleason... 
Oh, Donald uh, Gleason. Donald Gleason. Yeah, Donald Gleason is really good at yelling and yeah, looking he is. angry. Like <laughs> I was impressed when he was yelling. I was like, oh man, I do not want to be on that guy's bad side. Yeah. And again, I think it was really good that he was able to kind of be another really good bad guy. Mm-hmm. Like you got Snoke, you got him, and you have Kylo Ren, and they all are different aspects of the being the bad guy, and they're all really, really good at what they do. Yeah, he's basically the Tarkin, Grand right. Moff Tarkin of The Force Awakens, and I'm glad that he survived. Mm-hmm. As far as I know, he survived. Yeah. So I'll be I'll be excited to see him return in the Last Jedi. Yes. One of my bigger negatives, not maybe not the biggest, but a bigger negative that a lot of people probably don't care about, but I do, because I love the fact that they did this in the original trilogy, is the variations of the ships. In this one, all we get is X-Wings and regular TIE Fighters. Like, they don't even include Y-Wings or TIE Bombers or anything else. Like, Y-Wings should have been part of the Star Killer base attack, because they should have been bombing that oscillator thing that they were attacking that's what the y-wings were for bombing runs and i was disappointed that they didn't include those uh looks like we're gonna get an a-wing in the last jedi though so i'm excited about that for both of us i think one of the biggest negatives is that everyone in this seems like overly excited to be in a star wars movie Mm -hmm. and it's very blatantly obvious Especially with John Boyega and a little bit of Oscar Isaac. John Boyega more so because there are scenes, uh, mainly with the two of them, where he's just overacting and then there's a scene where he's dealing with Han Solo and you know Han Solo's like, look behind you and he's like, why are you doing this? I'm trying to come up with a plan. Like all this stuff, like just, it didn't feel right. And then with Oscar Isaac, he's like, it just it took me out of the movie when he first meets Kylo Ren. He's like, so who talks first? You talk first. I talk first. It, was, it didn't it didn't feel right. And they just they they what is that word? Overacting. Exude. Yeah. They just exude excitement. Yeah. And it's like you can it's kind of you can tell. Yeah. And uh, but it's okay. It's I know I would be excited if I was in a Star Wars movie. Of course. But as a professional actor, it shouldn't come through the screen, I don't think. Mm -mm. So aside from the fact that this is a Star Wars movie, which automatically gives it a better grade than (laughs) it would normally get, I really liked, I enjoyed watching it. Um, I like the characters. I like the plot for the most part. I like the humor. I love the return of Han Solo and the death of Han Solo as sad and as predictable as it was. I really did like it. Um, there's just a few negatives. Wasn't quite too happy with Leia and Chewbacca, especially <laughs> after Han's death. You're like, they had nothing to do with each other. And, um, but I liked the new characters as well. I liked Rey, I liked Poe, Dameron, I liked, uh, Finn. I thought, and I'm looking forward to the next one and mm-hmm. to see what they do with them. So, I give The Force Awakens an A. Wow. So... I really did enjoy this movie. I had a lot of fun with it. I love all the special effects. The fight scenes are awesome. The lightsaber duels. Um, I, I really love the fact that they brought in some of the original theme songs from the original movies while incorporating the new ones as well. And as well as the new characters. They're, they introduced us to a new series of movies and they did it really well. However... The Rathtar scene and my nitpicks about the fighters all being the same and the people just feeling a little too excited to be in a Star Wars movie kind of take it down a couple notches. So I got to give Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens an A-. And it's still a really enjoyable movie. I love this movie. Um, but yeah, an A-. minus. And I think that's one of the first times that I've ever given a grade lower than hers. Yep. That's okay. So before we end our video, we just want to talk really briefly and quickly about our theories. There's only Mm -hmm. two of them, but since the new one's coming out, we want to quickly go over those. So 
One of them is the fact that Han Solo, his death, Mm-hmm. May not be all it appeared to have been. Yes. Uh, because both Kylo Ren and Han Solo were holding the lightsaber at the mm-hmm. time of his death. And we both think that it's possible that Han Solo could have committed suicide to keep his son from completely turning to the dark side. Yep. Um, he could have activated The dialogue it. during that scene kind of hints at that. Because basically Kylo Ren, Ben, says... I know what I have to do, I just don't know if I have the strength to do it. Can you help me? And Han Solo grabs the lightsaber, probably around where the button to activate it is. And yeah, that's that's how I see it. Plus... Because that was his ultimate test. Yes. If he can kill Han Solo, he will, completely, he will complete his training, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And fall or completely submit to the dark side. Right. So... It's possible. What... I think that adds more of her, uh, a heroic death for Han Solo, then just to die. It's, he sacrificed himself so that his son would still be redeemable. Yeah. Plus, after he was killed, Han Solo kind of looks like, I'm sorry. Yeah. And touches his face Mm -hmm. almost like a, like a apologetic. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I, I. I I kind of hope we get the answer in the next movie. Um, I think it won't be like, oh. My dad, Han Solo, activated the lightsaber. I didn't do it. It's going to be more of the fact that he's still feeling the pull to the light side. Mm-hmm. That's how we're going to get a hint at Especially it. Especially because he still has his mom to deal with, yes. too. Yes. You do still see that the in the trailer mm-hmm. for The Last Jedi yeah. because it looks like he's struggling to fire a missile that yep. we assume is where Princess General Leia, his mother, is. But... I think I said it in my trailer breakdown, those scenes don't look like they take place at the same time because the people walking in the background around her do not seem concerned about being attacked. So the next theory is a theory that has been around for a while, and this is the one that we tend to agree on more so than the other one. And we're definitely hoping for it. Yeah, there's a little bias in this theory because we're hoping for it. Yes. It is the fact that Rey is not a Skywalker, not a Solo, not a Palpatine. But in fact, a Kenobi. Because everything that she does mirrors a Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi. And that includes her escape from Starkiller Base. It's very reminiscent of how Obi-Wan was sneaking around on the Death Star. The fact that she was able to mind control the the Stormtrooper played by James Bond. And the most important one has to do with Luke and Anakin's lightsaber. When, who really had that lightsaber the longest? Obi-Wan Kenobi. When he was in exile on Tatooine for, what was it, 18 years at least, until Luke became old enough to go off on his own and do stuff, after Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru died, Obi-Wan Kenobi held on to that lightsaber. We don't know if he ever used it or if he just held onto it in that box, but it was his for longer than it was Anakin's, much longer than it was Luke's. And if the lightsaber is calling to Rey, which I don't like that being more like Harry Potter, like the wand and the wizard are one type of thing. Anyway, if the lightsaber is calling to Rey, it would make sense for her to be a Kenobi because, again, Obi-Wan Kenobi had that lightsaber the longest. And... Further he evidence. He calls to her. He it's, calls to her it is in the Force Obi-Wan Vision. Obi-Wan Kenobi in the It's Force both Vision. Alec Guinness and Ewan McGregor. Granted, you do hear Darth Vader breathing, and you do hear Yoda and Luke. Again, but wishful thinking on our part. Yes. We're hoping she's a Kenobi. I, just, I really hope that she's not Luke's daughter or Han Solo and Leia's daughter, because that, I think, is both too obvious, too easy... And that's two things, but there's a third thing. <laughs> uh, I just don't think it would be as good of a twist because how great would it be to have... I mean, George Lucas basically said, Star Wars is like poetry. It rhymes. So to have it be in the original trilogy, Obi-Wan training Luke, uh, Kenobi training a Skywalker, it would be great to have it flip to be a Skywalker training a Kenobi. And Not to mention, I think I talked about this before, but 
if she's a Kenobi and is going to bring balance to the Force, it completely mm-hmm. changes the entire lens through which you watch Star Wars. It does. Since the beginning. Since the beginning. Yeah. It's like it completely changes everything, and I think that would be amazing. So. Yeah. Now, technically, Anakin did bring balance to the Force because he killed a lot of the Jedi, so it was like two and two. That's, yeah, that's balanced. So what did you guys think of Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens? Did you like it, love it, or hate it? Let us know in the comments below. And what did you guys think of our theories about Rey and Han Solo possibly committing suicide? Again, let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a big old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. And make sure you hit that bell icon so you can be notified of when we upload new content. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. <laughs>